Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, what is the difference between positive and negative reinforcement and positive and negative punishment? Now, oftentimes when reading about these concepts of reinforcement and punishment, we see positive reinforcement, negative reinforcement, and then we see punishment discussed separately. But actually there are two forms, as I mentioned, there's positive and negative punishment as well. So let's go through these concepts. So I'm going to be discussing this in light of how behaviorism is often used and reinforcement and punishment are of course parts of behaviorism. Behaviorism is often used when you're working with parents in order to modify the behavior of a child. Now there are other applications for behavioral therapy of course, but I'm going to be using this example uh, throughout the positive and negative reinforcement and punishment discussion. So let's look at first the words positive and negative. The easy way to remember how these differ would be the concept of adding something that's positive or removing something that's negative. And when we think of reinforcement, we can think of this as increasing the probability of a targeted behavior and punishment as decreasing the probability of target behavior. So now we just need to put these combinations together. So looking at positive reinforcement, that would be adding something after a desired behavior was performed. So let's use the example of trying to convince a child to complete homework after school. A positive reinforcer in this example could be after the homework is complete, they can have ice cream, right? That's a positive reinforcer. You're adding something, the ice cream, and it's a reinforcement because you're trying to encourage a specific behavior to occur. You're trying to increase the probability of a specific behavior occurring. Now, to give you an example of negative reinforcement with that same scenario, again, you have a child and you're wanting that child to complete homework, a negative reinforcement would be to say, well, you're going to stay at the, say, kitchen table. That's where they're completing the homework. You're going to stay at the kitchen table until the homework is completed. That's negative reinforcement because once the homework is completed, the negative stimulus, having to stay at the table, is removed. So let's look at punishment. So again, punishment tries to decrease the probability of a targeted behavior. So let's say there's a child and they're writing on the walls with markers and you want to understandably discourage this behavior. A positive punishment would be to add something after the negative behavior occurs, after the undesirable behavior occurs. So for example, they write on the walls with markers, they have to stand in the corner for 10 minutes, whatever the time frame is. You've added that. You're adding that punishment. Standing in the corner is not something that would normally happen. You're adding that. That's a positive punishment. A negative punishment would be removing something. So a child writes on the, the walls with markers and you take away for that evening or for a week or whatever their favorite toy. So now you've removed their favorite toy. You remove something that they want. That's negative punishment. So there's a bit of debate around using the terms positive and negative when talking about reinforcement and punishment. I think most would agree that there's a clear distinction between a reinforcer and a punishment. Again, a reinforcement increases the probability of a behavior and a punishment decreases the probability of a behavior. But when it comes to the terms positive and negative, it becomes a little harder to draw that distinction. And some would argue that you can't really draw that distinction at all. So let's use the example of a child completing homework or not completing homework and parents trying to encourage that behavior to occur. So in a situation where you have the negative reinforcement, where the, the child just sits at the table until the homework is done, you could also make an argument there that being set free from the table to go play in the house or outside 
is a reward. So you have the removal of something unpleasant being stuck at the table, and you have the addition of something pleasant. So really, with that example I used of negative reinforcement, you could make a case that there's both negative and positive reinforcement. In a sense, you could make the same argument with the positive reinforcement example of ice cream. So when the child is working on the homework, they're in a state where there is no ice cream. And when they're completed the homework, it's added. So in a sense, it's unavailable before and it's available after. Although in that particular example, I feel like you could make a stronger case there for positive reinforcement. And I'm basing that on the way that I usually draw the distinction. If you're looking at the two sides, like for example, going back to the child who's stuck at the table until the homework's done. If you look at the two sides of that, being stuck at the table and being allowed to play in the rest of the house or outside, I would look and say, which one's normal? Which one's expected? I think in that example, it's pretty clear that most children, when coming home from school, you would expect have some freedom to play inside the house and depending on circumstances, maybe outside the house. So that would be the normal state. Therefore, that child being stuck at the table until their homework is complete is an abnormal state. So I would argue that that's negative reinforcement because that's the more unusual state. So what's more effective, reinforcement or punishment? Whether working with positive or negative, typically, reinforcement is considered more effective than punishment. Now again, there's a lot of situations where that may not be the case. It depends on the parents, depends on the child and the circumstances, but typically we find the use of reinforcement is more effective than the use of punishment. I hope you found this description of reinforcement and punishment to be interesting. Thanks for watching.